but I think it's a verse of great importance in these days and times. As I feel, it seems like the month of January had a little bumpy start for some folks, maybe. And if not, hopefully it doesn't apply to you, but I don't think there's a man, woman, or child in this room that doesn't need this word right here today. We come from the book of John, the 14th tap, chapter, the 27th verse. If you would go ahead and post it, Mary. It reads as follows. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let me repeat that again. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Please be seated and pray with me now. Father God, we just thank you for the opportunity to become before your throne of grace, Lord. Praying for each and every member of our congregation, Lord, that you have seated here before me, Lord. I thank you for my darling congregation that you have given to me to, to lead, to, to guide, to teach, to, to give your word to, Lord. But as we do this today, Lord, have their minds focused on you, Lord. Give them the peace that passes all understanding. Give them everything they need, Father God, to focus upon your word today. Help them to learn about where their love, where their comfort, where their true spirit of joy comes from. Your joy, Lord, is eternal. Your joy, Lord, cannot be taken away. You're, you are the source of all joy and of all things that are necessary for life. So, Father God, let them see you and hear you. Let them not see me, but make me small, but rise up and be seen by them, Lord. I thank you now in advance for the person that wants to come forward to give their life to Christ or whosoever that want to be part of your kingdom. I thank you now in advance for that person. Father God, we thank you for these and all things. In your darling Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Giving honor to God, to the saints in Christ seated here before me, I'm just going to lift that verse up one more time. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. Peace, I leave with you. My peace, my peace. I like to speak from the thought this morning. True peace, true peace. Turn and smile at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh my neighbor, do you have peace? People today are suffering from all types of depression, fear, anxiety, loneliness. These things are running rampant in our society. We don't know what the causes are. We don't know what their stimuli is that make these things happen. It could be anything from the loss of a loved one to the loss of a job to illness to whatever. Maybe even possibly a chemical imbalance in your body. But these things are leaving people in a state of paralysis. There are many reasons why people are suffering from these things. And instead of facing their fears, they retreat, they run the drugs, they run the alcohol, narcotics, and they run to the solutions of the world as a way to escape from these things. Yes, brothers and sisters, even Christians are doing that as well. You see, for the believer... For me and for you, we should be grounded in our faith in Christ Jesus. Brother Dale, to those who live in this world, they put their faith in the chemicals and the doctor's prescriptions. Now, let me be clear about one thing. I'm not saying there's something wrong with taking medication. Listen carefully what I'm getting ready to say. God has created science to make the medicines we need to help us to live. Brothers and sisters, we are not to totally be dependent on medicines to fix our problems or as a vehicle of a way of escaping from them. Let me be clear about it. We are to depend on, say his sweet name with me. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Miss Carol, it is in him that we find true peace. It is in him that we find true joy. It is in him that we find true love. So if you are taking Cymbalta, 
Zoloft, Lexapro, Prozac, Welbutrin, Zexa, Abilify, and Resulti. Just keep taking them things, but start putting your faith in Jesus, who will give you perfect peace. Isaiah 26, 7 says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Too many people these days are putting their trust in the things of this world and giving, not giving them peace and not finding peace in Jesus. That's why they're not finding perfect peace. True, real, lasting peace can only be found in Jesus. Let's look at the text real quick. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And this is where I'd like to give you three for the Trinity to the glory of God. We see my first point. True peace can only be found when you have Jesus' companionship. True peace can only be found when you have Jesus' companionship. And his companionship isn't temporary. It's permanent. Let me be clear about it. His companionship isn't temporary. It is permanent. Look at the text once again. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. When you let Jesus rule, let him reign, let him rest inside in your heart, you will have his peace. That's what Colossians 3.15 says. Let the peace of God rule in your heart to which you are called into one body and be thankful. If Jesus is in your heart, you have God's peace. Brother Kevin, whatever circumstances, whatever bad situations, whatever events have gone horribly wrong, ask yourself this one question. What is God trying to teach me here? Don't stop and have a pity party, brothers and sisters. Get off your rusty, dusty, and praise God. Let me be clear about it. Job did just that. Lost everything. His wealth, his health, and his family. But the one thing Job did was praise God after having gone through everything. And let me be clear. You haven't gone through half of what Job has went through. The way the world finds peace will always be temporary. Every peace treaty starts with the idea of peace, but it always ends when the new war starts. Why? Because the people who signed it are flawed. They are imperfect. Either they have died or either each side perceives a weakness in their opponent that they feel they can't exploit. You see, Ms. Pat, that's why I use Russia and Ukraine. You see, the Russians underestimated NATO's resolve and the U.S. resolve to stand against totalitarianism and evil. You see, peace with men is and always will be a fragile thing. Miss Beverly, it's based upon trust. It struggles against the evil and selfish ambitions of men and not the holiness of God. Because the hearts and minds of men are always geared towards destruction, there can never be peace between mankind. You see, Miss Sue, Jeremiah 17 and 9 says, the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it. But true peace, true peace, Miss Tammy, is with Jesus. It's permanent because it's based upon solely his power, his ability to give it, his ability to sustain it. See, peace that Jesus gives is permanent. It's eternal. That's why he's called the Prince of Peace. You remember in Matthew, Brother Paul, Matthew the 14th chapter, that Jesus was walking on water and his disciples were afraid because they thought he was a ghost. He greeted them saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. In the midst of the storm, the disciples were in the boat. They saw the waves, the wind. Peter went out for a little walk with Jesus and sank. But the whole time, Jesus was providing his companionship with them that drove away the fear because he said, be of good cheer. Do not be afraid. When we are scared, we must turn to Jesus. Look at the text again. I leave you with my peace. I give unto you. Anybody notice this free gift yet? Jesus has given us his peace. My peace I give to you. I leave it with you. He's trusting us with this free gift. All 
we have to do is rest in his comfort. Trust in him. Believe in him. Remember, brothers and sisters, the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. Miss Yvonne, this is a promise that's good forever. But here's the part that I want everyone not to miss. Not to miss. Don't miss this here. His promise is not to remove you from the storms of life, but to be with you in the storms of life. Somebody should have shouted right there. You see, think about this for one second. Did Jesus remove his disciples from the boats during those storms? No. He joined them in the storm. The one storm, he walked on the water to two them. The other storm, he was asleep in the boat with them. Jesus will give you something. Somebody say grace. grace. That's his companionship. His grace is ever present. It's with us. Jesus never promises to remove you from the storms, but to be present with you in the midst of your storms, in the midst of your drama, in the midst of your trials, in the midst of your tribulations, your troubles, your problems, your heartaches, everything that goes wrong in your life. Jesus is with you. He is your constant companion. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. Have we not trials? Have we not temptations? Ain't there trouble everywhere? We should never, never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And that's what we should do. Jesus comes alongside every believer, alongside of you in the midst of every bad situation, every circumstance in your life. Miss Rebecca, he helps you go through whatever it is that you are going through. This is a promise that gives you and me and every believer. He gives to everyone who believes. Now, I know somebody doesn't believe me right now. So let me put some Bible to it. Look at the text. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. If Jesus said that, it settles it, because it's the truth, amen? amen? Look at the text again. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives it, give I unto you. There, this is my second point, we see my second point. There is no comparison. There is no comparison to the peace found in the Lord. There is no comparison to the peace found in the Lord. True peace can only be found in Jesus and not in this world. Miss Pat, true peace can only be found in Jesus and not in this world. Philippians 4, 7 says, Then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Going through Jesus is the only way you're going to get it. Finding Jesus is the only way you're going to get it. So having faith in Jesus, it says right here, he'll guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus, Philippians 4, 7. Jesus takes the time here in this verse to compare how the world gives peace. You can't find any true peace in this world because the prince of this world, the devil, is doing his job too well. Hello, somebody. Remember what, the, the, what Jesus said about the devil in John chapter 8 and in John chapter 10? He called him a liar. The father of lies. He called him a thief, a murderer. He's only coming to steal, kill, and destroy. You can't find any peace in this world if the prince of this world, the devil, is destroying it. But my Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. That's why there's no comparison between the peace that the devil gives the world and what the peace Jesus gives. Let me be clear about it. When the devil gives you peace, you have nothing but lack and want. You have nothing but fear and discomfort. You have nothing but pain and suffering. You have nothing but war and hate. Miss Trissa, you know one thing for sure, that Jesus will give you peace that passes all understanding. With Jesus, you'll have joy, unspeakable joy. With Jesus, you'll have every need met. There'll be no fear, nothing but blessed assurance, healing, and nothing but, nothing but happiness and joy. You have an end to war and a start of love. Jesus said in John 16, 33, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but of be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Somebody say overcome. Jesus told you, and now I'm reminding you today, that Jesus has overcome the world. You're an overcomer. He has defeated our enemies.
enemy and sent him running. The devil has lost this fight and we have victory in Jesus. Somebody say victory. We have victory in Jesus. But what the devil does is this. He tricks us. He deceives us, lies to us, has you fooled, hoodwinked, run them up, led astray, thinking that Jesus can't help you. The devil is a liar. If Jesus has overcome the world, how can you sit here believing the devil's lies? Every time something goes wrong in your life, when things don't go right, why do we believe what the devil says and not what the Lord says? You trust what the devil says over what Jesus says? Let me be clear. Just because a little wind blows doesn't mean it's a hurricane. And if a hurricane is coming, you know the master of the wind and the waves can tell every storm in your life, peace be still. Come on and give God some glory right there. Have you forgotten? Or do you need me to remind you? Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus says in the text again, look at it. My peace I give. I give it to you. Jesus is giving us his peace. He's trusting you to activate it. Now, let me explain. When you get a new debit card or a new credit card, you have to call the bank and activate it. Anybody do that before? Say amen. They ask you a series of questions for security purposes to make sure you are who you say you are to prevent fraud. Now, when you're done, the person at the bank tells you, you are all set up and now you can use your card. Well, Jesus has told you and me that all we have to do is activate our faith credit card and just believe in him and we can have peace how do I know this how do we know this here's how let me give you his number to call him right now Romans 10 13 whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved here's his other number John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life let me give you his other number Number. Romans 10 9 if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you shall be you will be saved but let me be clear about one thing John 3 3 says you must be you gotta be born again calling on the name of Jesus is the only way we can be saved to the utmost and when you call upon him you have just activated his peace Look at the text. My peace I give. I give it to you. It's, he's the only one that can give us his peace. There's no comparison with how the devil does it and how Jesus does it. With Jesus, we have perfect peace. With the devil, we have nothing but sadness and, 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 and just sadness. Come on, give God some glory. Give God some glory right now. But let's go ahead and review Mary. My first point, true peace can only be found when you have Jesus' companionship. His companionship isn't temporary, it's permanent. My second point, there is no comparison to the peace found in the Lord. True peace can only be found in Jesus and not in this world. But lastly, my third and final point, true peace provides you with comfort. Anybody need comfort today? Anybody need comfort today? I got a new blanket for Christmas. I just love it. I just wrap myself up in that and watch the football games. And I'm just happy. Lean back in my chair. And I'm, I'm just so good. Giving you grace to deal with all your troubles and ending your fears. That's what True Peace does. It gives you grace to deal with all your troubles and ends all your fears. Look at the text real quick. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Brothers and sisters, there are so many things today that will have you scared. Brother Sean, you go to your bank account, you check it, and realize the balance is zero. That's going to make you scared. Miss Marjorie, you go out to your car, you walk in the parking lot, you see a huge dent in it. That's going to make you scared. Miss Anita, you keep watching the news, horror after horror of information meant to get you scared and got you all worried and upset. Brothers and sisters, you get that call from the doctor that tells you to come on in. We got to do some more tests. That gets you worked up, gets your blood pressure off. You get a call from a friend 
You get a call from a family member. You get a text message that just knocks you to the floor. And now you're paralyzed in fear from what you just read or what you just heard. I'm going to say it again. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Miss Nancy, that's why Jesus told his disciples these words. Let me remind you the context of what Jesus was saying here during this time. It is between the chapters of 13 and 17 that Jesus was talking to his disciples during the Last Supper. He was communing with them for the very last time, breaking bread, washing feet, and then praying over them, and then talking to them. Jesus, in the same night in which he was betrayed, spoke these words to them, knowing full well that they would abandon him the first sign of trouble. Knowing full well that they would hide from the authorities in the upper room. Knowing full well that he would be hanging on the cross from the 6th and ninth hour before the whole world having been beaten, tried, hung, and bled and died on a cross for our sins. Jesus was telling his disciples, I'm giving you peace. But true peace comes from me, not from this world, because the world is seeking to kill you and destroy you because the leader of this world is the devil. So he reminds them, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus will later say to you and me that you may have peace in the world, but you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. And once again, he would say, I have overcome the world. The peace that Jesus gives you and me is like a comfortable blanket. It's warm. It never lets cold air creep in, but keeps you warm, snuggled, and cuddled, and loved. We are his children. What Jesus does. Remember that first time you brought your baby home and they were all wrapped up nice and tight and everything and how happy they looked on their face. Just like that. They were warm and loved. But now, we want that same feeling from Jesus. And he gives it to us when you keep faith in him. So I have to ask this question. What things are keeping you from finding true peace, brothers and sisters? What things are keeping you up at night? Is it your bills? Philippians 4.19 says, God shall supply all your needs. Is it sickness? Jeremiah 17.14 says, he'll heal your body. Is it spouse and marital problems? Proverbs 5 and 18 says, love your husband and love your wife. Children. Is it your children? Proverbs 23, 13 and 14 says, and I'm quoting what it says. It says, beat your children and keep them from going to hell. What things are causing you to fear to be afraid. Is it that depression? 40, Psalms 40, 47, 147 and 3 says, God will heal the brokenhearted and bind up all their wounds. Let me be clear about it. Is it your job? Colossians 3.23 says, work like you're working for the Lord. And nothing they do at your job can ever bother you because you are working for the Lord. Is it the politicians running the government? Psalm 146 and 3 says, don't put your trust in them. Put it in the Lord. The world. Is it the world? Psalm 103.19 says, my God is large and in charge and is sitting on his throne. Is it your sin problem? John 1.9.1 says, confess to them and Jesus will forgive them. If you confess them, he'll forgive you. But let me be clear about it. You better start believing because Acts 2.38 says, repent let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. Start reading. Start knowing. Finding comfort in God's word. And that will help drive away those fears. It will help in those terror. It will give you comfort. Have you opened your Bible? Have you read your Bible? The answer to everything we need is located between the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelations. Just pray. Ask the Lord to direct your brown, direct your blue, hazel, green, red, pink eyes to the right scripture. And he'll give you the answer that you need. All that requires, all that requires is spending time in his word. And let me be clear about one thing. The more you start to spend time in his word, the more you start to see Jesus. And you start to hear his word. You start to know Jesus. And you start to find peace in Jesus. God's word will build and strengthen you. God's word will keep and preserve you. God's word will lift you up, protect and provide. Provide you with everything you need to make it in this world. Mistress, once you start trusting and doing what God's word says, and let me be clear about it, you'll find that you
you start seeing more of Jesus in your life. Now, I know I might have hit a nerve with somebody today telling you to read your word. But that's right. We have to be obedient and do what God's word says. Jesus said, keep these commandments of mine. Not disregard. Don't ignore them. Do them. Why? Why do you think you got all those troubles, maybe? Why you might have all these problems? Have you no peace? Because you might not have read God's word, but you read every posting on Facebook. Shame on you. Maybe because you didn't look at his word, but you watched every TikTok video that you could find. Maybe you listened to every lie the devil has told you and believed in those lies, but you didn't read every truth and every promise from the word of God found in his Bible. Have you tried trusting? Have you tried believing? Have you tried having faith in Jesus? And when you do that, have you ever wondered why Jesus ever kept asking the question to his disciples? Oh, ye of little faith, especially after they witnessed every miracle and still they doubted him. There's no difference between them and us. They had the living, breathing word, Savior present with them in the flesh. And we have the ever living, breathing word of God with the promises of God in the Bible filled right here in front of us. They didn't have the Bible, but we do. Let me be clear. We have the living word. Miss Tammy, because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Let me be clear. There's a life application point to that. We got to start trusting, not doubting. We got to start reading and remembering. We got to start believing and holding on to God's everlasting Word. And when you do that, you will find peace, true peace. Randy, before we walk out of here, we call ourselves people of God. But we act sometimes more like the Israelites when times get tough. We get caught up in our sins. We like living like the world and not living for Jesus. We wonder why we have so many problems. No rest and no peace. But Deb, we all, we all need to take a serious look at our lives and ask how we are living. Ask ourselves this question. Am I living for Jesus or for this world? Margie, if you're living for Jesus, when problems come your way, you seek comfort in Jesus and not this world. But Sister Stewart, you stop doing the things that got you in trouble in the first place. I ain't going to rehash your sins or my sins or the sins of this whole church. You need to know what they are. You already know that. But let me be clear. If it's not pleasing to God, stop doing it and start living for Jesus. And then you'll experience what Jesus said. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives it. Let your heart not be troubled. Brothers and sisters, if we don't want to sit in front of the mirror, you ever sit in front of the mirror, take that long look at that problem in the mirror? It's you. It's me. we rather blame everyone else, point them things at everyone else, but not point it at where the problem starts and start giving them over to Jesus. If you start trusting, give that life over to him, you won't need anyone else's companionship. You only want Jesus' companionship. You won't need to compare the world to Jesus because nothing compares to him. He's above all. He is all in all. Lastly, you can only find true peace in his comfort. There's no more worries if you turn them over to Jesus. There's no more tears. He said, every time you cry, I'll wipe every tear from your eye. No more loneliness because my Jesus said he'll be with you to the end of the age. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. When you know Jesus, you know peace. But no Jesus, you'll have no peace. I'm going to say that again because in the context of that, that's the, can, that's the K-N-O-W, the knowledge of knowing. The no Jesus, you know peace. The N-O means there's no Jesus. You'll have no peace. Take comfort in these words. Look at these words that's on the screen. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives it. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Brothers and sisters, let me guarantee you one thing. When you do this, no one, and I mean no one, can steal your joy. And you will find peace. You will find true peace in Jesus. To God be the glory.